Case Black, also known as the fifth enemy offensive in Yugoslav historiography and often identified with its final phase, the Battle of the Suchiska, was a joint attack by the Axis taking place from 15 May to 16 June 1943, which aimed to destroy the main Yugoslav partisan force, near the Suchiska River in southeastern Bosnia. The failure of the offensive marked a turning point for Yugoslavia during World War II. It was also the last major German-Italian joint operation against the partisans. The operation immediately followed Case White which had failed in accomplishing the same objectives, to eliminate the central partisan formations and capture their commander, Josip Broz Tito. Chapter 1 – Background During the previous operation Vice, Chetniks fought against partisans under Italian command. However, even during the operation, negotiations were held between the German and Italian leaders on the disarmament of the Chetniks. German Wehrmacht deeply believed that the Allies would invade the Balkans after victory at North African campaign. In operations Vice I and Vice II, the Wehrmacht did not achieve desired goals and did not destroy partisans, so preparations began for a new venture. With Operation Schwartz, the Wehrmacht intended to clear the background of the Adriatic coast by destroying both the Chetnik and partisan movements, which were still firmly established in Herzegovina and Montenegro. Hitler calculated that, in the event of a British invasion of the Balkans, Chetniks under Italian care would switch sides and join the Allies. However, in the first phase, there were tensions and misunderstandings between the German and Italian armies on that issue. Since the Italian commanders in Yugoslavia were very reluctant to disarm the Chetniks, Hitler won the consent through Mussolini's government and the general staff. General Mario Robotti was fiercely against the disarmament of the Chetniks, at least until the partisans were destroyed. This attitude was shared by Chief of the Italian General Staff of the Land Army, General Vittorio Ambrosio, but he had to obey the promise that Mussolini gave to Hitler. At the beginning of March 1943, General Ambrosio summoned Robotti and Alessandro Pizzio Birelli to Rome for talks on the disarmament of Chetniks and operations against partisans. Chapter 1 Section 1 Axis Plans the Axis rallied 127,000 land troops for the offensive, including German, Italian, Croatian, Bulgarian, and over 300 airplanes. For this operation, the commander of the Southeast, Colonel General Alexander Loa, received elite 1st Mountain Division from the Eastern Front as reinforcements. Loa entrusted the tactical command to the German troop commander in Croatia, Rudolf Luters. The combat group for this operation was therefore called the Croatian Corps. The German command adjusted the operational plan of action against partisans to the characteristics of the terrain. They planned to concentrate main partisan divisions and their supreme headquarters on the naturally isolated and almost uninhabited area between the Tara and Piva canyons, and the Dermita mountain, and to destroy it there with the mass use of aviation, artillery and mountain troops. The 1st Mountain Division with its northern wing, the Italian 19th Infantry Division Venezia, the Battle Group Ludviga, the 369th Infantry Division, the 118th Jäger Division with the 4th Home Guard Jäger Brigade of the Independent State of Croatia were deployed in a semicircle on the east and north sides. In the first phase, these forces were supposed to take control of Sanzac and push partisan forces to the left side of River Tara. The southern wing of the 1st Alpine Division Torinense, 23rd Infantry Division Ferrara and the 7th SS Mountain Division Prince Eugen were supposed to push partisans from the south and southeast. After that, the 118th Jäger Division had the task of occupying the left bank of the Piva and thus closing the environment, so that the breakthrough was hindered not only by strong forces but also by deep river gorges. This would bring partisan forces to a dead end and destroy them. In addition to these forces, there were additional four Italian divisions deployed in Adriatic hinterland, from the Albanian border to the lower course of the Naretva, were these Italian divisions, 155th Infantry Division Emilia in the Bay of Kotor, 151st Infantry Division Perugia in area of Vilusi, Vilica, and Trebinia, 
154th Infantry Division merge around Dubrovnik and 32nd Infantry Division marker in Downstream of the Naretva, from Mostar to Metkovich. Chapter 1 Section 2, Partisans' Activities Prior to Axis Offensive While the Axis were preparing for Operation Schwartz, fierce battles were fought on the territory of Herzegovina and Montenegro. After Operation Vice, the operative group of partisan divisions set out with all its might through Herzegovina to break into Montenegro, destroying the Chechniks and Italians' units on its path, and taking control over the area. In that area, the exhausted fighters would rest, the wounded would be treated, and then they would move towards Kosovo and southern Serbia. Fierce battles between partisans and Italian Chetnik forces were fought in the sector for Chekalinovic Gako Savnik. Neveznie passed from hand to hand as many as eight times. On April 6, partisan forces forced the Dina, defeated parts of the Torinense division, and the Chetniks near Ifsar, captured Kajinus and besieged Forcha, where an Italian battalion, and about 1,000 Chetniks were surrounded. Chasing the Chetniks deeper and deeper into Montenegro, the Supreme Headquarters moved to Mount Dermiter. After the heavy defeat inflicted on the Italians in Puka Javorka, on May 1, the 1st and 2nd Proletarian Divisions embarked on a comprehensive offensive to liquidate the Italian Chetnik garrison in Kolosin, with the intention of continuing the advance towards Berene. As part of the siege of Kolosin, a strike group of battalions defeated the Italian regiment near Bayok on May 15. At the beginning of Operation Schwartz, the Yugoslav National Liberation Army had 22,148 soldiers in 16 brigades. There were 8,925 partisans from Croatia, 8,293 from Bosnia and Herzegovina, 1,492 from Serbia and 3,337 from Montenegro. By ethnicity 11,851 were Serbs, 5,220 Croats, 3,295 Montenegrins and 866 Muslims. Partisan units were bringing with them Central Hospital with about 3,000 wounded. In addition, Mueller troops suffered from severe lack of food, and medical supplies, and many were struck down by typhoid. Chapter 2, Operation Chapter 2 Section 1, Axis Preparations Wehrmacht forces were advancing towards Montenegro from the north and from the east. Partisan forces were keeping parts of the Italian Alpine Division Torinense, and about 1,100 Chetniks under blockade in Fortress since April 15. In early May, parts of the German 369th Legionary Division penetrated as far as Forcha, suppressing the 6th East Bosnian and 15th Majevica Brigades, liberating the Alster Battalion of the Italian Torinenza Division and about 1,000 Chetniks, who had been under siege partisan forces for 23 days. The Chetniks were disarmed, and released. The left wing of the 369th Legionary Division advanced from the direction of Priboge towards Plievlia, and, without encountering any resistance, merged with the main body of the Torinenza Division. Chapter 2 Section 2 – Disarmament of Chetniks During the advance of the 7th SS Mountain Division and the 118th Jäger Division through eastern Herzegovina, German forces encountered a certain degree of Italian obstruction and skirmishes with the Chetniks. Hundreds of Chetniks were disarmed. At the beginning of May, Povle Durizic established contacts with parts of the 1st Mountain Division and the 4th Brandenburg Regiment. The Germans decided to conceal their real intentions, so they let the first group of disarmed Chetniks go home. By accepting communication with the Chetniks, by mid-May 1943 they managed to concentrate a large number of Chetniks, led by Jurizic, around the town of Kolosin, where German combat units were already deployed. In a surprise raid on the morning of May 14, despite the established contacts and strong opposition of the commander of the Italian 14th Corps, General Roncalla, the Germans captured the Chetniks in their sleep and disarmed them. German forces on the ground appealed to the higher command to reconsider the decision to arrest the Chetniks, 
because they proved to be reliable allies against the partisans, but the German command did not give up on the original idea. One part of captured Chetniks, including Durizic, was to be interned in prison camps in Greece and Poland, and the rest for labor battalions in the upcoming fight against the partisans. In the meantime, Malovic left the village of Gornje Lipovo and headed for Serbia. After capturing the majority of Montenegrin Chetniks near Kolosin, the Germans continued with Operation Schwartz. Chapter 2 Section 3, Phase I, Initial Battles After a period of troop concentration, the offensive started on 15 May 1943. The Axis troops used the advantage of better starting positions to encircle and isolate the partisans on the Dermata mountain area, located between the Tara and Piva rivers in the mountainous areas of northern Montenegro, and forced them to engage in a fierce month-long battle on waste territory. The first clashes after Operation Schwartz commenced, took place in the north, between Kajinus and Fortia, with parts of the 369th Legionary Division, and in the east, near Brodarevo and Mojkovac, with the 1st Mountain Division. Chapter 2 Section 4, Phase 2, Breakthrough Attempt Toward Eastern Bosnia Faced with the advance of large German forces from the east, the Supreme Headquarters decided to prevent the closure of the ring by capturing Fortune and provide communication with eastern Bosnia. The attack was carried out from May 21 to 25 by the reinforced 1st Proletarian Division against the majority of the German 118th Jäger Division and the 4th Home Guard Jäger Brigade of the Independent State of Croatia. Despite certain tactical successes, after a flanking attack by parts of the 369th Division near Grodets on May 25, this attack proved hopeless. From there, on May 27, the Supreme Headquarters ordered the transfer of all forces to the left bank of the Tara. The 118th Jäger Division had the task of breaking out on Piva from the west and blocking it. On May 22, her 738th Regiment, without contact with partisan units, broke out on Vakevo, a plateau west of Piva. However, they could not organize communications and supplies in this wide and impassable area, so the regiment commander, Lieutenant Colonel Annika, sent one battalion to the south to establish a connection with the 7th SS Division, and one to the west, to connect with the headquarters of his division. The remaining, 2nd Battalion, in a battle on May 29, was repelled from dominant positions by the two battalions of the 2nd Proletarian Brigade. The intervention of parts of the division from the north, across the Dina, was suppressed by the forces of the 1st Proletarian Division, which moved across the Tara. Thus, the partisan forces firmly occupied Vokavo, and prevented the Germans from closing the ring on Piva. The next natural obstacle on which the 118th Division could do that was Valley of River Suchiska. On May 18, the 7th SS Division, and the Italian Division Ferrara began to appear from the south towards Savnik, Zabliark, and Retinge. The successful defense of the 1st Dalmatian and the 5th Montenegrin Brigades, which suppressed the appearance of the right wing of the 7th SS Division, and the Italians, enabled the organization of an attack on the left wing of the 7th SS Division. Chapter 2 Section 5, Phase 3, Arrival of British Mission Informed on May 20, 1943 of the arrival of the British military mission, the Supreme Headquarters left Derlivice Atara and settled in the forest near Black Lake, at the foot of Dermita. On the night of 27-28 May, the British Liaison Department arrived. At the head of this mission were Captain William F. Stewart, who worked at the British Consulate in Zagreb before the war spoke Serbo-Croatian, and William Deakin, a history professor at Oxford. In addition to the two of them, the mission had four more members. The very next day, Tito received the British. He demanded military assistance, and that the British Air Force bomb German concentration centers. From May 31 until June 5, the 4th Montenegrin, 7th Kreiner and 10th Herzegovinian brigades fought fierce and exhausting battles with the Germans on the rugged sides of the mountain Bayok and in the upper course of the Piva. The successes achieved were insufficient, given the reserves available to the Germans. Chapter 2 Section 6, 
Phase 4, Supreme Headquarters in Encirclement. As the attempt to break through the front via Fortune failed, the Supreme Headquarters had to return to its initial positions, which the Germans used to make an even stronger ring. In addition to the daily fighting, the Suchiska Canyon was bombarded by planes every day, in a very low flight. On June 3, Tito crossed the Piva near Mratinj with the Supreme Headquarters. Thus, in the first days of June, the entire Supreme Headquarters found itself encircled, together with the Central Hospital, in the Suchiska Valley. On the same day, at the session of the Supreme Staff, the position of the partisan groups with the hospital was discussed, and it was concluded that the situation was critical. The Supreme Headquarters saw that the main operational group could only break toward the west, through the Suchiska Valley because there were weaker German forces there. However, the Germans foresaw this development, so they hurried to fortify the entire Suchiska Valley. Having established that this direction, through the source part of Suchiska and Gatako Polya, was densely occupied in depth, the Supreme Headquarters decided to divide partisan forces into two parts. The first group consisted of the 1st and 2nd Divisions, which had already forced Piva, with the Supreme Headquarters, and the 2nd of the 3rd and the 7th Division, with the Central Hospital and part of the Councillors of Avnoj, located east of Piva. The second group was led by Milovon Dillers, as a delegate of the Supreme Headquarters, and Savakovacevic, who was appointed commander of the 3rd Division. The two groups were to break through in divergent directions in order to stretch the German forces. The first group was to break through Suchiska to the northwest, while the second was given the task of returning to the right bank of the Tara, toward Sanzak. The first proletarian division was sent to attack the valley of Suchiska via Piva and Vakavo. As a dominant point, it was necessary to take the hill at Vakavo, to make a corridor for the free passage over Suchiska, in the direction of Zelengora and further to Bosnia. The German command also foresaw such a possibility, so it sent an advance force to take Vakavo. In a hand-to-hand -hand battle, the forces of the 1st Proletarian Division managed to overcome the Germans and take control of this dominant point. The Germans then began to occupy the entire valley of the Suchiska, from Chintis to its confluence with the Dina near Celebic. The 7th SS Division Prince Eugene penetrated in that direction, which surrounded the majority of forces and the Central Hospital. In the area around the canyons of Suchiska and Sua, fierce battles began for the surrounding heights, which alternately fell into the hands of both. An area of 5 to 6 kilometers was made for the passage of the majority of forces. The wounded were supposed to go there as well. The 1st Proletarian Division marched through Malinklade and on June 8, 1943, broke out on Zelengora. The 2nd Proletarian Division was less fortunate. At the place of Bear, not far from Voluyuk, there was a scene of bloody battles with units of the 118th German Division. On 9 June Tito was nearly killed on Malinklade when a bomb fell near the leading group, wounding him in the arm. The popular post-war report of the event credited Tito's German shepherd dog Lux, for sacrificing his life to save Tito's. Captain William F. Stewart was also killed by the explosion. Chapter 2 Section 7, Phase V, Partisan Breakthrough Toward Eastern Bosnia Facing almost exclusively German troops, the Yugoslav National Liberation Army finally succeeded in breaking out across the Suchiska River through the lines of the German 118th and 104th Jäger and 369th Infantry Divisions in the northwestern direction, towards eastern Bosnia. Three brigades and the central hospital with over 2,000 wounded were surrounded. Following Hitler's instructions, German Commander-in-Chief General Oberst Alexander Lower ordered their annihilation, including the wounded and the unarmed medical personnel. Chapter 3, War Crimes Of the more than 6,000 killed partisan fighters in Suchiska, a large number were exhausted fighters and wounded who were executed by the Germans. The report of the 1st Mountain Division says, captured, 498, of which 411 were shot. 
Most of the immobile wounded were hidden by partisans, with nurses. However, the Germans, searching the terrain with search dogs, killed them almost to the last, together with the nurses. In addition, a large number of civilians were also killed. The SS Mountain Division was also notorious for killing civilians, suspected of helping partisans. At the post-war trial, Generals Alexander Lower, Fritz Nietholt and Joseph Kubler and at that time Standartenfuhrer August Schmuber were charged with war crimes during the battle. They were sentenced to death and executed in 1947. Chapter 4 Aftermath In total there were 7,543 partisan casualties, more than a third of the initial force. The German field commander, General Rudolf Luthers in his final report described the so-called communist rebels as well organized, skillfully led and with combat morale unbelievably high. The successful partisan breakout helped their reputation as a viable fighting force with the local populace. Consequently, they were able to replenish their losses with new recruits, regroup, and mount a series of counterattacks in eastern Bosnia, clearing Axis garrisons of Vlasnica, Srebrenica, Alovo, Kladanj and Zvornik in the following 20 days. The battle marked a turning point toward partisan control of Yugoslavia, and became an integral part of the Yugoslav post-war mythology, celebrating the self-sacrifice, extreme suffering and moral firmness of the partisans. Chapter 5, Order of Battle Chapter 5 Section 1, Allied Order of Battle Yugoslav Partisans 1st Proletarian Division, commanded by Kojar Popovic 2nd Proletarian Division, commanded by Peko Dapkovic 3rd Assault Division, commanded by Radovan Vakanovic, and later by Sava Kovacevic 7th Banyar Division, commanded by Povle Yaksik 6th Proletarian Brigade 15th Mijevica Brigade Chapter 5 Section 2 Axis Order of Battle Germany 7th SS Volunteer Mountain Division Prince Eugen, Commander Karl von Aberkamp 1st Mountain Division, Commander Walter Stettner 118th Jäger Division, Commander Joseph Kubler 369th Infantry Division, Commander Fritz Niedholt Regiment 4 Brandenburg Reinforced 724th Infantry Regiment Italy 1st Alpine Division Torinense 19th Infantry Division Venezia 23rd Infantry Division Ferrara 32nd Infantry Division Marca 151st Infantry Division Perugia 154th Infantry Division Merge Forces of Sector Podgorica Croatia 4th Home Guard Jäger Brigade Bulgaria 63rd Infantry Regiment 61st Infantry Regiment also in the Area Infantry Division Chapter 6, in Film Battle of Suchiska was made into a movie in 1973, Suchiska, with Richard Burton playing the lead as Josip Broz Tito, leader of the Partisan Forces. Chapter 7, in Song there are several songs about the Battle of Suchiska. One of the more popular is called Sivi Sokole which translates to Peregrine Falcon. It mentions the death of Commander Savakov Archevich. Chapter 8, Memorial Complex Sculptor Miodrog Zhivkovich designed the Memorial Complex, dedicating to the Battle of the Suchiska in the 1970s. The complex contains frescoes by the Croatian artist Krsto Higegesic. Chapter 8 Section 1, Books Hor, Marko Attila. Genocide and Resistance in Hitler's Bosnia, the Partisans and the Chetniks. Oxford University Press. p. 341. ISBN 978-0-19726388. Deakin, Frederick William. The Embattled Mountain. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Maclean, Fitzroy. 
Eastern Approaches. Penguin Group. Milovanovich, Nikola. Draza Mailovich. Volume Poraz. Belgrade, Slovo Luv. OCLC 491,065,064. Schwider, Klaus. Partisan Ethnkrieg in Yugoslavia 1941-1944. Hamburg, Mittler. ISBN 978-38132-07941. Kuchen, Victor. Borsai Suchis. Zavad Zayudzbenika Nastavanasadstva, Belgrod. ISBN 978-86-1704-9841. Tomasovic, Yozo. The Chetniks. Stanford University Press. ISBN 978-08-047-08579. Tomasovic, Yozo. War and Revolution in Yugoslavia, 1941-1945. Stanford University Press. ISBN 978-08047-79241. Tertsik, Velimir. Durovic, Malinko. Suchiska. Belgrade, Vojno Izdavaki Zavod. Chapter 8 Section 2, Journals. Trifkovic, Garge. A Case of Failed Counterinsurgency, Anti-Partisan Operations in Yugoslavia 1943. The Journal of Slavic Military Studies. 24, 314-336. DUI, 10.1080135180046.2011.572733. ISSM 1556-3006. S2 SID 143233788. Retrieved the 16th of June 2014.